Hello and welcome to Midnight Showings. As always, I'm Kelly, and I just got out of Spy. Now, again, I'm not going to do my usual jump cut thing here because I just want to get this video out really fast. But, final verdict for those who are wondering, go see this film. It was a perfect satire slash homage to everything we love about the spy genre. And, frankly, I usually don't like Melissa McCarthy. I really don't. And, I was really surprised at how much fun she was in this movie. It's not her usual shtick of laugh at me, I'm fat. No, it's actually her telling some really clever and well thought out jokes. I, I found myself rooting for her and by God, her stunt double. Her stunt double kicks ass because I have no, there's no way in hell that I believe that Melissa McCarthy did half the stuff that she did inside that movie and her stunt double really sold it. <laughs> Uh, this movie isn't for everybody, but if you love spy films, especially James Bond, because this movie takes more than a few jabs at it, go see this movie. It was just a blast. Probably one of the best movie experiences I've had all year. It really was. Uh, for those who want to stay for some spoilers, the basic story of this, you've seen this story before, it's bad guy gets a nuke. Only one person knows the nuke, so sp spies have to go undercover and find the nuke. Okay, we've seen this story so many times, and they even point out how cliche it is. And <laughs> what, what really sells this movie is the character interactions. Uh, Melissa McCarthy as uh, Cooper is just brilliant. She She's the tech person who's always in the basement, uh, hacking everything for the spy that she's supporting and calling an ordinance and whatnot. The spy that she's supporting is Mr. Fine. Yes, Mr. Fine. <laughs> Bradley Fine. Played by Jude Law. And Jude Law is really, really good in this film. And it really did surprise me just how much he was in the film. Because advertisements have put his name under the and category, which means that he's going to get killed off 10 minutes inside of the movie, right? He actually does. But that's not the last you see of him. I'm not going to tell you whether or not he's alive or anything. I'll let you go into the movie wondering that for yourself. But, <laughs> yeah, again, he's playing an obvious James Bond with a really bad American accent. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> it's It's... It was enjoyably bad, but that's the way he's playing it off. And the only reason why they need to find this nuke is because he kind of screwed up in his mission. He's interrogating the guy, he's got a gun to his head, and he sneezes and accidentally pulls the trigger and blows the guy's brains out. Because he forgot to take his allergy medication. Again, this is pretty damn funny. <laughs> and just the character interactions just between Sheldon... Uh, not Sheldon, but uh, Cooper and uh, Fine are just some of the best buddy combos that you've ever seen. Really. Where the movie kind of drags is when they go into this like, little love relationship because Cooper actually loves Fine, yet he's a clueless idiot who doesn't realize it and got her this really, really obnoxious cupcake necklace. <laughs> but... Fine ends up dying by the hands of the leading villain lady, who is, I don't know her actress name, but she is very, very, very good at what she does. She's very menacing when she needs to be, but she's down to earth real also. She has likes, she has dislikes, and by God, when <laughs> later in the movie when Melissa McCarthy convinces her to tag along, <laughs> Melissa McCarthy and this woman... Some of their interactions of just insulting each other are some of the best burns I have heard since, like, season four of Epic Rap Battles of History. It was just clever, it's inventive, it's playing against stereotypes, but oddly to stereotypes. That's one of the things I really liked about this film, is that it didn't... It was making fun of spy movies the entire way through. But just like, say, Hot Fuzz did with action movies, it acknowledged why we love them, and it just went balls to the walls insane by the end of it. <laughs> now, the reason why Vine ended up dying is because someone betrayed the 
CIA and all of their active agents are now up in the air. Their names, their faces, everything. That's how they were able to get the drop on fine. So they have to send in someone who is not an active agent. Hence, Melissa McCarthy being the basement tech person getting shoved into the field. By her own request, but meh. And by God, she's just getting the short end of the stick the entire way through from her boss as far as cover ITs, where she's staying, just equipment given. It is, it's hilarious. It really is. It's, it's playing to every single trope you've seen in a spy film. You know, ordinary gadgets that do super amazing things, but in all actuality, she's being, she has to carry around chloroform cloths in a hemorrhoid baggie. She has anti-poison pills instead of a stool softener kit. And she's got a liquid nitrogen pepper spray that disarms all the secure, any secure, uh, security system that it touches inside of these f foot fungal <laughs> cream things. It's this movie is hilarious in every way, shape, and form. Not necessarily because of the story, but because of the people working on it. The directors, the actor, adult director and writer, Paul Fake did this one both ways, just like he did with Bridesmaids and The Heat. I should probably let you know, I'm not a big fan of Bridesmaids. I was not looking forward to this film when I went to go see it, but by God did I walk out with a smile on my face. Got knocked off about an hour after that when I had to go see Insidious 3, but we'll get to that in the next video. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's really not much I, else I can say about this film. It's, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a comedy involving spies. And, oh, there is one other thing I can say. Jason Statham is another kind of, he plays the rogue spy. <laughs> I use that in quotation marks. If you see the film, you'll understand what I mean. But he's playing a rogue spy, and he goes off the grid to try to find out who killed Fine and stop this bomb. And he just peri periodically shows up randomly in the rest of this film, usually screwing everything up. <laughs> and the entire time, he's got these monologues where he's like talking to himself, talking about himself in the third person, as if he were Chuck Norris. I once had my arm, this arm, completely ripped off. And I had to replace it and put it back on with this arm. <laughs> and the entire time he's like say, saying all these Chuck Norris things, they just keep getting more and more far-fetched as he goes along. At first, they're, you know, they're, they're pretty standard, you know, spy, exaggerated stuff. Then they go into the extreme, like, James Bond-esque. <laughs> stuff and then they just go into the completely impossible stuff and he if given to anybody else this could have been easily ruined hell jason statham is playing a parody of his usual badass self that he plays in every other film he's in and i do mean that <laughs> he accomplishes nothing he is strictly there for comedic effect and it is awesome um yeah, as far as the characters go, with those four out of the side, the main woman, uh, Melissa McCarthy, Jude Law, and Jason Statham, it's just, everybody else is just, they're really good, but those four just stand out. They sell this movie, and they are worth a ticket price. So final word for me is go see this one immediately. Don't wait for Blu-ray. Don't even wait for matinee. If you can, eh, all the better to you. But go see this film. You will not regret your decision. This is probably the surprise hit for, for me, because I really thought this one was going to suck. I had no real faith in Melissa McCarthy. She turned it on me. So, yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Uh, I might as well just do it with my regular cat. I'll see you all next time.